Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you a step-by-step -step process on how I made some custom bench cushions. If you follow my channel, you may recall that this summer, I helped my nephew create his reading nook. Part of the process was to create some custom bench cushions. A little bit of background. My mom has taught me a handful of times how to sew, and to be completely honest, I have never done anything without her by my side. However, when I took on this challenge, she was out of town, and I figured what better time to see if what she had taught me had actually sunk into my head. So for this project, I am creating two 15 by 17 by three cushions. Does that make sense? 15 wide, 17 long, three inches tall. The first thing I'm doing here is I'm measuring the bottom piece of the cushion and I measure it doing a quarter of an inch smaller than the actual size of the cushion. So in this case, it's a 14 and three quarters by 16 and three quarters. Quick tip, if you have a dark fabric, use a bar of soap to make your markings on the cloth. As soon as you wash it, it's gonna go away. And unlike a pencil, you're gonna be able to see it. But in my case, I'm using a light color fabric, so I'm just gonna use a pencil for this whole project. Okay, I am gonna be adding a zipper to the bottom of the cushion. This is just in case it needs to be washed and also it'll be easier to put the cushion inside. I'm simply folding it halfway hamburger style. Then I trace the edge to see where the half is located. And then I repeat the process folding it the other half. With the aid of some basting tape, I'm going to line the zipper to the middle markings I made. And here is my lesson number one. You do not need basting tape for this process. A more cost-friendly way to ensure that the zipper is aligned and won't move is to simply use needles, making sure that they're perpendicular to the zipper. The alignment of the needle is important because when you use a sewing machine, you want to ensure you can remove the needle after you're done sewing. And also, if you don't do it perpendicular, you possibly risk breaking the sewing machine needle, and then you have to replace it, and it's a whole thing. So just make sure that if you use needles, align them correctly and the direction perpendicular to what you're sewing. With that fully done, I simply cut down the middle of the fabric so that when the zipper opens, the fabric opens too. And with this, I found my lesson number two and three. Lesson number two, ideally, you want to use cushion underlining material for the bottom of the cushion. Two main reasons. Reason number one, it provides a little bit of grip at the bottom, preventing the cushion from sliding. Reason number two, when you complete this cut, like I'm doing now, the material will not de-thread over time. And this is where lesson number three comes into place. If you decide not to use cushion underlining material, like me, then you need to leave enough fabric to create a finish edge. If not, eventually the fabric will de-thread, it'll expose the zipper, and potentially fall over time. Okay, 
let's pivot back to building the rest of this cushion. For the next section, we are focusing on the sides and the top. I first place the top on the fabric to have an idea where the edge will land. Then I measure the height of the cushion and similar to the base, I remove a quarter of an inch to that height. So in this case, it's gonna be two and three quarters of an inch on all four sides. Once everything is traced to the desired size, you simply cut the outer edge of what you've measured. And in addition, you are going to cut these corners. This is pure excess. Using some basting tape, I'm going to add it to one side of the corner and connect it to the adjacent side by simply folding one side over the other. Similar to the zipper, you can use needles here. One thing to note is you place the basting tape on the side that's going to be exposed at the end. As you can see here where I'm folding the fabric, the pencil marks are noticeable. Ultimately, these are going to be inside of the cushion. I'm going to mark the seam about 3 8 of an inch because that's the width of the basting tape. Ideally, don't buy too thick of a tape because you'll either end up with some exposed tape or too thick of a seam and then the cushion's not going to fit. With this measured out, we are ready to go back to the sewing machine. Remember how we had folded the bottom piece in half and made markings and in half and made markings? We're going to do the exact same thing with this piece. I simply hold both edges together, align them, and make the marking. These marks are going to help us align the bottom and top piece so that when we sew it together, it, it lines up correctly. Once again, using some basting tape, I simply applied it to the perimeter of the base and aligned the top piece to this one. Similar to the corners, the basting tape is applied on the side that's going to be exposed. And similar to all the other areas where I use basting tape, you can use needles to ensure that the edges remain stable and don't move while you're sewing them together. And before going back to the sewing machine, I measured out my seam 3 8 of an inch to make sure it's even on all sides. We are almost there. We're on the home stretch. All that is pending is to flip this 
outside in and place the cushion inside. And with that, I will give you guys my last lesson, lesson number four. Placing the zipper somewhere other than the bottom. I feel like if I could rebuild this, I would put the zipper somewhere other than the bottom. Maybe on the side, it probably would have made my life easier putting the cushion inside of this. Um, I don't know. But at this point, to be honest with you, I was just happy that it was working out. <laughs> And with that, after playing with it for a little bit and aligning all the sides, we ended up with a custom made bench cushion. I hope you guys enjoy this video and I hope it was helpful to learn from my mistakes. Now please, before you leave, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. As usual, I'll make sure to add a list of materials along with their links in the description below. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye. I'll see you guys next time here at Angie's Crafts Furniture Renovation. Bye.